I, Doug Ford, swear that I will duly and faithfully, and to the best of my skill and knowledge, execute the powers and trust proposed in me as Premier and President of the Council and Minister of Intergovernmental Affairs of the Province of Ontario. So help me God. We came here to celebrate our victory. Doc Ford, future of our country, Canada. I chose to break with convention. I wanted to confirm my oath of office here with you. A new day will dawn in Ontario. <laughs> Prosperity and opportunity, opportunity for all. Now I get to come out and meet my friends. You turn around, honey, we'll get a picture. My friends, together we will go far. I want to thank you and God bless the great people of Ontario. Thank you. Good evening. It is Premier Doug Ford and this is his new office. Tonight, the new Premier and his freshly minted cabinet are getting down to the business of governing this province and trying to keep all those campaign promises. And for the first time in decades, Ford took the oath twice, first inside the legislative building and second right here out on these steps. And then he spoke. We must cross party lines. We must put aside political differences, no matter if it's red, blue, green or orange. It doesn't matter because this is about the people from every walk of life, from every part of Ontario, from every race, religion, colour and creed, coming together under a singular purpose, under a united vision, a vision shared from every corner of our province, a vision of pros a prosperous Ontario, an Ontario that works for you. My friends, I'm reminded of a proverb, an old proverb which says, if you want to go fast, you go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. My friends, together we will go far. I want to thank you and God bless the great people of Ontario. Thank you. Not only is this a political victory for Doug Ford, it is a personal one as well. When his brother Rob was mayor of Toronto, he predicted Doug would one day be premier, and many people laughed. Well, today, Doug just couldn't stop smiling. All right, so I'm saying it to you for the very first time, Premier Doug Ford. How's the ring of that? That's very nice, and I'm very humbled, and I appreciate all the support from the people of Ontario. What are you going to do when you bring back the ledge July 9th? Well, we have a couple quick items, the cap and trade and carbon tax if you want to. The people Doug Ford will be trusting to help him run government was a well-cupped secret until today. There are 22 cabinet ministers in all, including Doug Ford himself who will take on intergovernmental affairs. Not surprisingly, his star candidates all made the inner circle and were sworn in today. Christine Elliott, who ran against Ford for the leadership in a tight race, is the deputy premier and health minister. Her experience as a patient ombudsman will be critical in the promise to end hospital overcrowding. We made certain specific uh, promises during the course of the election uh, to end hallway medicine, so there's a lot of work that we have to do towards that, creating uh, a number of long-term care spaces and working on uh, developing a comprehensive system for mental health and addictions because so many people still fall between the cracks. Je, Caroline Mulroney. Caroline Mulroney, who also ran in the leadership race, will be the province's new Attorney General and Minister for Francophone Affairs. What do you want to bring to the public? Well, I've got a lot of experience and I look forward to working very hard with our team uh, in the office. 
And Rod Phillips, another political newcomer who used to head OLG and Post Media, will now head up Environment, a particularly challenging role given Ford's stance on ending cap and trade and the battle that will bring with the feds. And the environment's a critical, critical issue for Ontarians. Uh, so are jobs, and we have to make sure those are balanced. Veteran MPP Lisa McLeod will run the Ministry of Children, Community and Social Services and Women's Issue. And Lisa Thompson will be the Education Minister and have to keep Ford's promise to repeal the sex ed curriculum. They all met with the new Premier three hours after they were sworn in for their very first Cabinet meeting. You have your first Cabinet meeting this afternoon? Yeah, we were hitting the ground running, that's for sure. What are you going to open it with? Oh, we're, we're going to chat inside there. Thanks, Cynthia. <laughs> Now, after that cabinet meeting this afternoon, a new timeline was announced a short time ago. Doug Ford will summon the MPPs back to the legislature on July 11th. On the 12th, we'll hear the throne speech, which will be very interesting. And then uh, the legislature will sit for what I'm told is at least a couple of weeks. Now, Ford and his cabinet do not have an easy road ahead. He promised to find $6 billion in savings without layoffs, and he has to find billions more to fund the many promises that he made during during the campaign. Uh, and he also promised to balance the books by the third or fourth year. And Toronto Mayor John Tory commented today on the cabinet picks. First of all, uh, I know many of the people very well for many years that are in the cabinet, and they're people who I know are committed to a strong Ontario, which means, by definition, a strong Toronto. I mean, you cannot have a strong, prosperous uh, Ontario without having a strong Toronto. And I know many of those people understand the issues of transportation, housing, uh, child care, uh, education, health care. Uh, I know they understand those issues very well. And so I'm looking forward to working with them. Uh, the people have elected a new government, and my job is to work with them to get things done. And I think they share the same attitude from the Premier on through the Cabinet, and uh, that's what we'll start to do uh, right away.